Parotid mass. What is the classical approach towards the parotid mass? Let us try to understand. So whenever we have a parotid mass, let us try to understand the approach towards the parotid mass. The first thing is, sir, I want to understand, I want to know whether this is benign or whether this is malignant. And this is what is very, very, very important, understanding benign versus malignant. So for the diagnosis or for the differentiation of benign versus malignant, what will I use? I will use FNAC and remember what about the true cut, which is more sensitive. The true cuts are absolutely what contraindicated. Why is it contraindicated? You must have heard of that phenomena. So uh, if you want to drill in a wall, you always ask the people whether or no there is any wire going on that side of the wall or if there is any water pump or water line going on. So this is a very common phenomenon which happened with my mother. My mother brought a 200 rupees a st a stand and she went, she called the, you can say, uh, the electrician to fix it. And the electrician came with the drill and drrr, he just tried to drill through the tiles. And do you know what happened? The water, the water started to flow and that fellow disrupted the main water line. So what is happening in this case, that same resemblance, you're drilling into this. Remember, there's a pipeline which is going, that is the parotid duct, which you can injure. There's a nerve which is going, that is the facial nerve. And the third is, if you don't do anything, at least you will cause the tumor spill. So why two cut is contraindicated? Because there is increased risk of three important things. There is increased risk of the tumor spillage, point number one. The second very, very, very important is, there is increased risk of facial nerve injury. And if that is not possible, there's again, a, if that doesn't happen, there's again a probability of the parotid fistula or parotid duct injury. So if the parotid duct, that is the stensens duct, the stensens duct injury happens, always remember it will leak into a fistula. And what type? It will result in a high output duct type fistula. For that we do a Newman Seabrock operation that I will tell you or teach you in the later part of this chapter. So try to understand when we talk about the radiology of choice and what is the radiology of choice? Remember for the oral cancers also, MRI is preferred over the conventional CCT. If you are suspecting a very strong malignancy, then yes, PET CT is the investigation of choice for oral cancer. But here, MRI is fairly sensitive. Next is, let us talk about the composite approach to the parotid mass. Before that, yeah, what are the classical tumor markers for the parotid cancers? So what are the tumor markers for the parotid malignancy? We have three standard markers. We have MUC1. MUC1 or MUC Garmin we have. We have the DF3. We have DF3 or DF4 basically. DF4. Yeah. DF4. And then the third is CEA is also in certain conditions. So DF3, DF4, MUC1 and CEA. Now let us talk about approach to parotid mass. So the first thing that we all need to understand is whenever we get a patient of parotid mass, the next thing is we need to find out whether it is benign. So the next thing that we all have to consider is the nature. So the nature could be either it could be benign or it could be what students malignant. So benign versus malignant. Suppose if it is benign, what is the next thing that we need to understand students? In case of benign, the next thing is where is this tumor? So the next point that we need to find out is the next information that we need to find out is the site. Students, it could be the superficial lobe or students, it could be the deep lobe or, or, or it could be the both lobes. So we have deep lobe, we have both lobes, we have superficial lobe. If it is involving the superficial lobe, you know you will not be able to do the what students enucleation because the residual mass will again cause a recurrence and there's a fairly increased risk of malignancy. So if it is superficial lobe, then what is the surgery of the choice? The surgery of choice that we do, still that is popular, is superficial parotidectomy. Students, what is the concept of superficial parotidectomy? It's very, very, very simple. The entire superficial lobe is, you can say, removed. So when we talk about this, try to understand 
that you expose suppose this is the tumor that we have you will take out the entire you can say superficial lobe exposing the facial nerve when its branches when you're going close to the facial nerve and its branches you have a fairly increased risk of injury to them howsoever smart you are you will always have some level of you can say uh, uh, neurotomasis neurotomasis or neuropraxia at least so there will be edema which will cause temporarily discomfort the logic was why are you doing this because you don't want to leave the residue now try to understand most of them are located in the lower pole and do you know nowadays we don't have a policy of always going for superficial parotidectomy we have something which is known as suprafacial parotidectomy so what is the concept of suprafacial parotidectomy it is nothing but simply wide local excision or basically it's like a lumpectomy so it is wide local excision of the lower pole lower pole superficial lobe tumors so lower pole tumors of the superficial lobe try to understand in a nutshell if this is the facial nerve which is going and here you have the tumor so suppose this is where the tumor is instead of removing the entire you can say superficial gland i will simply go for the wide local excision of this much part and this is what is known as suprafacial parotidectomy the advantage is minimum risk of injury to the superficial lobe and this is what is very 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 important suppose students it is involving both the lobes now what to do so if it is involving the deep lobe or both the lobes in that case you will have to go for total conservative parotidectomy now why is it known as conservative parotidectomy is it done by the conservative people that is that the reason no so total conservative parotidectomy the only and the only logic is it is nothing but nerve sparing you need to understand that it's a benign tumor so there is no logic of touching or damaging the nerve now on the other side if it is a parotid malignancy now if if it's a malignancy we have a very radical approach towards the tumor because residue is going to cause the compromise of your efforts so very important is in case of malignancy you are going to go for radical parotidectomy and this is what is very 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 important from examinations perspective from the residency perspective from the mcq perspective whatever you say it's very important for you to know this so radical parotidectomy the simple 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 ideology is what are the parts that you are going to remove you are going to remove the gland you are going to remove the duct so stenson's duct you are going to remove the fat around the duct you are going to remove the fascia around the duct and now 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 one more thing is what about the muscle yes you are going to remove the muscles now what muscles are you going to remove yes i am going to remove the masseter and along with that understand the stenson's duct pierces the buccinator to enter the oral cavity so remember the buccinator shall also be removed along with that you all must be waiting for that so facial nerve and facial nerve if involved and if involved again you need to understand plus what part students involved part only this is what is very 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 important so in if involved and involved part only and along with that yes you all will remove the lymph nodes also so these are the things that we shall be removing but despite this fact there is a fairly high risk of recurrence and therefore all the malignancies are followed by a conventional classic radiotherapy 60 grays over what weeks over 6 weeks in the what weekly divided dose so this is what is very 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 important very important now the concept is what about the radiotherapy is okay what about the chemotherapy do we routinely go for chemotherapy answer is we don't go for chemotherapy in the salivary gland tumors except for the lymphomas so only only for lymphomas only for the lymphomas we prefer to go for chemotherapy else chemotherapy is not actually required majority of these tumors are not belonging to the squamous or adenocea category so these tumors are managed only with radiotherapy only in the special cases like some cases of squamous cell cancer you might require to go for nact and post operative you can say post surgery chemotherapy for advanced cancers but yes early stages of them also don't require chemotherapy now you have damaged the facial nerve the next question is 
सर हाउ विल यू गो फॉर फेशियल नर्व रिकन्स्ट्रक्शन आई विल टेक द फेशियल नर्व रिकन्स्ट्रक्शन अगेन when i'll deal with the last part in, i'll go to the facial nerve injury part because we have the you you can say there are two aspects of the facial nerve the dynamic reconstruction is done with the nerve cable graft but what about the you can say the tarsal raphes so all those things the slings that i shall be discussing separately but right now just to summarize this to discuss this in a nutshell how do you do the facial nerve reconstruction it's very 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 simple so for facial nerve reconstruction we require a what nerve cable graft so we require a nerve cable graft and when we talk about the nerve cable graft yes there are three popular sources what is that the most commonly used is greater auricular nerve it's the greater auricular nerve and apart from that we have auriculo temporal nerve so we also have auriculo tem oral nerve so greater auricular nerve auriculo temporal nerve we even have greater or lesser petrosal nerve so greater or lesser petrosal petrosal nerves but do you know if someone asks you what is the best cable graft for this answer is the sural nerve so remember sural nerve is again very 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 important thing so sural nerve is again important so sural nerve we have greater auricular auricular temporal these are the you can say options that we need to understand apart from that i will discuss this again at the end of the chapter when i will be discussing the miscellaneous things in salivary gland tumors so best you can say replacement is the sural nerve before moving forward and going to the other benign tumors let us understand the basic concept of the facio venous plane of patty or patty's superficial parotidectomy so when we talk about the you can say the parotid you need to understand that there is something which is known as the nerve so this is the nerve and what nerve is going sir facial nerve is going through this apart from that there is a vein which is going through the middle and what is that vein students retromandibular vein so there is something which is known as retromandibular vein and there is something which is known as facial nerve do you know there this encompasses an imaginary you can say plane which is known as facio venous plane of patty so what is the concept of this facio venous plane of patty it's very 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 simple so the facio venous plane of patty plane of patty this is nothing 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 but an imaginary plane where the retromandibular vein is going through the middle of this plane always understand the facial nerve is going above this plane and what is the structure which is going below this answer is it is the external carotid artery so external carotid artery is going below this above is facial nerve and through this is the retromandibular vein now this is very important when you are doing the surgery because lot of decision is taken according to this only so suppose this is the tumor if you remove the entire superficial lobe above this facio venous plane exposing the facial nerve that is what is known as the patties or the you can say classical superficial parotidectomy if you remove only the wide you can say tissue around this superficial uh, the superficial lower lobe tumors that is what is known as suprafacial parotidectomy so this was about the basic concept this was about the basic concept of approach to parotid mass let us understand about the other parotid mass.